وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to be starting a new series where I will be speaking about the manners and the etiquettes that is required and must be found in the person who wants to refute. My beloved brothers and sisters, refuting is considered in Islam an obligatory act. And it is actually from one of the greatest obligations in Islam. But it is an obligation on the people of knowledge who have the knowledge and the understanding of the religion. It is through them Allah Taala protects the religion from distortion. Uh, tr- people trying to tamper with the religion, alternating the religion, changing it. It has a great place in our religion. وَلِذَلِكَ ابْنُ الْقَيِّمَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He says, uh, he's talking about the types of pens. Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about the type of people who write, the type of writing. So he says, رحمه الله, القلم الثاني عشر The twelfth type of writing or the twelfth type of pen he says is القلم الجامع A comprehensive pen وهو قلم الرد على المبطلين And it is the pen of those who refute the people of falsehood ورفع السنة المحققين And they raise the sunnah of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام وكشف أباطيل المبطلين and they expose the falsehood of those who come with falsehood. The different types of people of falsehood and different uh, categories in which they fall into. And they clarify in their authorship and their writing the contradiction of the people of misguidance. وخروجهم عن الحق and how they have left the truth and the حق ودخولهم في الباطل and how they've entered into falsehood وهذا القلم ابن القيم says he says this type of authorship this type of writing this type of pen في الأقلام نظير الملوك في الأنام they are like the kings in the creation وأصحابه أهل الحجة الناصرون لما جاءت به الرسل and its people are people of proof who are giving victory to that which the prophets and the messengers have come with. And they fight against the enemies of the prophets and the messengers. And they are calling to Allah. They call to Allah with wisdom. And they call, him, call to him subhanahu wa ta'ala with good reminder. And they are mujadiluna, they argue and they debate from whoever leaves that true path, that correct path. Anyone who leaves that path of the messengers and the prophets, different types of debates through their pen, through their writing, they do it. Ibn al Qayyim says that these people who are using this pen, who are writing with this pen, are harbul li kulli mubtilin. They are in war. Direct war with every individual who is upon falsehood. وَعَدُوُّنَ They are an enemy. لِكُلِّ مُخَالِفٍ لِلْرُسُلِ And they are an enemy to everyone who opposes the messengers. فَهُمْ فِي شَأْنٍ They are upon a great affairs. وَغَيْرُهُمْ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْأَقْلَامِ فِي شَأْنٍ And the other people who write and use their pens are in another situation. These people are in their own league, basically, what Ibn al-Qayyim is saying. And this really shows us that the importance of refuting falsehood, exposing the people of falsehood, and how great it is in our religion. Like in my beloved brothers and sisters, this refutation, this refutation, even though it's an obligatory act in our religion, 
and it's from the great obligatory matters of the religion. But without a doubt, every good act, there is uh, two paths which shaitan paves from it, which is either extreme exaggeration or extreme negligence. And little are those who are in that middle path. They are bil wasati wal ihtidal. They are in that middle path when it comes to refutation. They don't go in extreme exaggeration and they don't also go into extreme negligence. And that is what is praiseworthy in our religion. Allah made us subhanahu wa ta'ala وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا Allah made us a, a nation and a people who are in that middle path. And again, who determines what path is the middle path is Allah and His Messenger. We don't say this path is the middle. Allah and His Messenger sanction the middle path. Because humans can always make the middle for something which is not praiseworthy in our religion. For example, okay, um, uh, a sister could wear niqab and cover her whole entire body. And another one could be wearing a miniskirt. So a third sister comes and says, you know what? I'm not extreme like this one who's fully covered, who's covering her face, even her eyes, and she's covering everything. And I'm not extreme as the one who's wearing a miniskirt. So what am I? I'm in the middle, I wear trousers. That's what she said. That middle is not what the religion sanctions. So the word middle should always be explained as the middle in which Allah and his messenger sanctioned. Okay, brothers and sisters. Or you could say the true path. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى means the path Allah and his messenger are pleased with. And that is what we want every day in our life, inshallah ta'ala, to be upon that path. So sometimes some people, they go extreme in exaggeration, in this good deed of refuting. And some people, they go to extreme negligence in this praiseworthy and good deed. And inshallah ta'ala, I want to read on you a statement by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, who clarified the reality of this matter. Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, قَدْ يَبْغِي بَعْضُ الْمُسْتَنَّةِ إِمَّا عَلَى بَعْضِهِمْ وَإِمَّا عَلَى نَوْعٍ مِّنَ الْمُبْتَدِعَةِ بِزِيَادَةٍ عَلَى مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَهُوَ الْإِسْرَافُ الْمَذْكُورُ فِي قَوْلِهِمْ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله says There could happen قَدْ يَبْغِي بَعْضُ الْمُسْتَنَّةِ Some of the people of the Sunnah What do they do? They transgress, they exceed their limits. Some people of the Sunnah exceed their limits. They exceed their limits. Sometimes they exceed their limits with one another, with يعني, people of the Sunnah. Some of the people of the Sunnah, they go extreme and they exceed their limits and their boundaries with a group of people from the Sunnah. They oppress them, they wrong them. Sometimes that happens. وَإِمَّا عَلَى نَوْعٍ مِّنَ الْمُبْتَدِعَةِ And sometimes they go overboard. They go extreme. With who? With a group of people who are falling into a type of, a type of uh, innovation. بِزِيَادَةٍ They go overboard. عَلَى مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ in more, in more than that which Allah and His Messenger commanded. Now Ibn Taymiyyah, what he's saying is that some people of the Sunnah might oppress and exceed their limits with another group of the people of the Sunnah. Or they might even go overboard with the people of innovation. And then Ibn Taymiyyah he says, and that is what the israf, al madkuru fi qawlihim, the israf that is mentioned, israf is to exceed your limits. That's mentioned in the ayah, Rabbana our Lord, اغفر لنا forgive us. For what? ذنوبنا our sins, wa israfana. And our exceeding, us exceeding what? Fi amrina in our affairs. Allahu Akbar. Then Ibn Taymiyyah goes on to say, وَبِي إِزَاءِ هَذَا الْعَدْوَانِ تَقْصِيرُ آخَرِينَ فِي مَا أُمِرُوا بِهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, and another group of people, what they do is they fall into another extreme, which is extreme in negligence. They, on the other hand, don't believe anyone should be refuted. Don't refute anyone. Leave the people. Why are you concerned with the people? 
في هذه الأمور كلها فما أحسن ما قال بعض السلف ما أمر الله بأمر إلا اعترض الشيطان فيه بأمرين لا يبالي بأيهما ظفر غلو أو تقصير وفاعل المأمور به وزيادة منهي عنها بإزائه تارك المنهي عنه وبعض المأمور به والله يهدينا الصراط المستقيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ابن تيمية he says these people they fall extreme in negligence in that which Allah commanded us subhanahu wa ta'ala in calling to the good and prohibiting the evil ابن تيمية then says فما أحسن ما قال بعض السلف look how excellent and spot on is the statement of some of the salaf who said that Allah never commanded a matter except that what? Shaytan, he paves two paths from it. And he doesn't care whichever of those two he throws you into. What are they? Ghulu in extremism, in exaggeration, and also extremism in negligence. Pay attention, it's very important. So, my aim and objective, inshallah ta'ala, is the people who fall into extreme exaggeration in refuting, they go against the manners and the etiquettes that is required. And I will, inshallah ta'ala, explain that in the upcoming episodes. And the people who don't like this whole concept of refutation and are against it, jumlatan wa tafsila, they also go against the manners of refutation, and the good outcome that will come from refutation. They, they get rid of all of that. They dismiss all of that. And inshallah ta'ala, I will explain that in more details in the up upcoming episodes. Remember that, my beloved brothers and sisters. Whatever you do, don't go extreme in exaggeration and extreme in negligence. The way that I hope to speak about this issue, inshallah ta'ala, is in uh, four more episodes. So inshallah ta'ala, this was the first episode bi-idhnillah al-kareem and there are going to come four episodes after this. The first uh, topic inshallah ta'ala, already this was an introduction. The um, next episode inshallah ta'ala, I will speak about the importance of refutation. The re importance of refutation. And I will speak about at taqseer al shari lahu. How there's principles that was set by the Sharia regarding refutation. That will be the first episode, or more like the second episode. This would be the first episode, and then the next episode, inshallah ta'ala, would be the importance of refutation and the principles that the Sharia lay down for refutation. Then the third episode, inshallah ta'ala, I will be speaking about the position regarding those who fall extreme in refutation. I'll expose that, inshallah ta'ala, I'll explain that, inshallah ta'ala. And I'll bring it to light. The third, inshallah ta'ala, I will speak about those who fall into extreme negligence when it comes to refutation and the evil consequences of their actions. And the last and the final episode, which will be the fifth episode, inshallah ta'ala, I will clarify the position that the sharia holds regarding refutation and the principles in which the sharia set for refutation, how it's done, who can do it? When do you do it? In what manner and method should you do it? Inshallah ta'ala. So those are going to be the five episodes where I will be speaking about this topic, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect, my beloved brothers and sisters, is from me and shaitan. And Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.